Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Environmental Social Justice. I'm your host, Wendy Nystrom, and we welcome back Stephen Winbrandt. Welcome back, Stephen, King of Compost. Thanks. Great to be here with you, Wendy. So you are the King of Compost. So you are the founder of Winbrandt Farms, which is an urban mini farm that became a gem of urban agriculture in Los Angeles. Could you tell people briefly how you launched this? 15 years ago. <laughs> you had to really think about that. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm thinking, I mean, how far to go back? I decided for every reason under the sun that I wanted to grow my own food. And I had my childhood home's backyard as my canvas. And so I had this really ambitious dream to grow every square inch of this 40 by 60 foot rectangle in Los Angeles in food. I had no idea how I was going to do it because I had never grown anything in my life. I was connected to an amazing man, a, a pioneer beyond organic farmer who learned from the wisdom of John Jevons and Alan Chadwick, pioneer organic biodynamic farmers in the 70s at UC Santa Cruz. He took me under his wing and propelled me eons ahead of where I would have otherwise had been as a newbie gardener. And, uh, and he said, you're going to make tens of thousands of pounds of compost to, to nourish and restore and elevate the life-sustaining capacity of the living skin of the earth, of your backyard. And people are going to think you're crazy, but I see you. You've got it in you, and you're going to do it. And he talked me through how to make lots and lots of compost, which of course is the food for the food and it's the food for the soil. Yeah. I'll talk more about that. Um, and he said, people are going to think you're nuts. You're going to grow the most amazing food people have ever seen. And sure enough, my maiden growing season, which was a good eight to 10 months after I made this compost. So I took over a half a year prepping to mm ready to grow food. It wasn't slapped together some wooden raised beds or just, just dig in the earth and plant. It was, it was, it was growing the, the medicine to restore and elevate the vitality of soil to grow plants of, of superior nutrient density and disease and pest resistance. Exactly. Uh, it was many months later that I planted my first bed and the first bed I planted the first, my maiden growing season, there were veteran garden builders and permaculture designers who've been growing food longer than I've been alive, who came into my backyard and said, what the heck are you doing back here, kid? And that turned into, I want to learn your secrets. And when I started making compost professionally, just a couple of years later, they would become my best clients because they got compost for many different gardens um, that they grew and tended to stewarded all over Los Angeles. And so my career um, quickly uh, turned into a, a mission and a calling and a central passion of my life and my life's work. And I have done everything from taught workshops on how to grow food organically really, really well in the, uh, in the urban environment, um, to growing, uh, specialty greens, baby greens and microgreens for some of the finest chefs and restaurants in Los Angeles to, um, of course, making and selling my products. I make the first and only handmade Demeter biodynamic certified compost in the United States. There's a lot to say about uh, Demeter and biodynamics, probably for another con, uh, podcast. I know, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> but uh, Demeter is the world's only certification for biodynamic agriculture. Um, huh? I think biodynamic cool. agriculture is the most advanced form of food farming and nutrition that humanity has ever known. And Demeter is the highest, most stringent agricultural certification in the world. It's far beyond the USDA organic certification. And um, mm -hmm. so I hold that certification. I make my compost and grow my food um, with biodynamic techniques. It's a very um, coveted uh, certification because um, it is, it's, it's, you know, the organic certification has come not to mean all that much. And there's a vast disparity in practices that different people can call organic. Um, however, yeah. um, biodynamics is a much higher, more stringent um, 
certification and uh, the integrity behind um, all that we do and how we maintain our um, our farms and how we steward the earth um, uh, and and where we source our ingredients from um, all of this is looked at um, in a in a very um, thoughtful and discerning way so I make and sell products I consult for um, farms and retreat centers and uh, mm -hmm. orchard trainers and folks who manage uh, lands um, to um, both create compost for maximum soil fertility for the lands that they steward and um, create custom systems and programs for uh, organizations to um, uh, recover and transform, i.e. compost, all of their food waste and their organics, so grass and leaves and branches and all and 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 garden corn stalks and tomato stalks and uh, manures and each and every organic source that they have on their lands, how to transform that on site and um, grow their soil and grow gardens and and to turn what many see as as waste and things of no value such as food waste into yeah. um, extraordinary value and and uh, fertilizer fertile iser and exactly uh, and and medicine and nutrition um I, I love the fact you keep saying medicine for the soil because that is so true that is spot on for what we need to do and um, so you're, you are transforming how we handle our food waste. Before we dive into what you do, because it's very important that people understand what compost is and is not. Mm -hmm. Those tabletop food composters. <laughs> could you explain what those are, the composters? Yeah, first thing, they're, of course, as you put in the quotes, they are not composters. <laughs> um, <it's, sighs> some of them will... Are, are, are more careful than others. Um, all of them are a joke, but the company, some of the companies won't use the C word because they know it is not compost because uh, organic matter does not compost in a day um, no. or a week and or on your tabletop um, in the first place. And, um, and, but others will straight up use that word and it's, it's, it's a lie. And actually all of these products are nothing more than choppers and dehydrators and yep. um it's one of the biggest greenwashing schemes of the 21st century and actually not only even of the 21st century because these all existed years and decades ago just in different okay. and like bigger forms just like phones get smaller like these chopper dehydrator things um just get smaller and more fancy looking um they literally it, it I, I, I say um, in regards to um, putting our food waste in the in our green bins for our waste haulers, which we'll talk about soon, I'm sure. Um, oh, yeah. I, I say that next to the landfill, that's the worst thing we can do with our food waste. But actually, I would put these chopper dehydrator things even before that. That is literally the worst thing. I, I may even put it, it, it may even be a tie with the yeah. landfill because the, the carbon footprint they take to make in mm -hmm. China and get here in the first place is, you know, they're a, they're a, they're a needless, irrelevant piece of crap machine that, that <laughs> has no place on our planet in the first place. And so that carbon footprint and to make it and to ship it here from mm -hmm. across the world and to, you know, to go to the warehouse, to the next warehouse, to the retail, to the consumers. And the trucking in between all of that, just to get it back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. No, so there's a lot. Alone, then the amount of electricity it uses to do no good. And yep. then, and I actually won't even cover this all. And I don't want to spend too much more time on this because they're really um, entertaining and hilarious and, and totally sad at the same time videos on YouTube, for instance, that, that debunk this whole sham oh. of a, of a product. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I won't even, I won't even name all of the things, but then the end product the, 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 the result of the dehydrating chopping is not something that we can use in our garden. And it's another lie that they'll, that they'll show on video. Like you can, I mean, they'll show this stuff, this like light brown 
stuff that's that's like disgusting looking. It's it's like well, you think it's brown, it's soil, it's got to be good. It's like no, yeah, because the stuff that gets wet, it's gonna be garbage. <laughs> you call the company and they say you can't use more than ten percent of it in soil. If you use more than ten percent in like a soil mixture, all the plants will die. Well, good real compost, you can use as much as you want. You can't use too much, but definitely even poorly. Well, yeah, we'll talk about this too. I mean, just <sighs> what? Oh what? no! It, and and glad that you pointed out though, because I mean, I myself looked at one of those and I thought, well, it's too expensive, and the energy it would use would probably skyrocket our electric bill. So I'm like, I'll just take a pass on it. But just so people do understand, what is composting? What what yeah. is the actual methodology of that that you do? Great. It is the aerobic, so with oxygen, with air, decomposition, breakdown, the aerobic decomposition of organic matter. And to go a little further than that, the organic decomposition, excuse me, the aerobic decomposition of organic matter into really, really small, unrecognizable, uniform parts. And again, actually, for the second time, Wendy, I don't remember what I ran <laughs> off last time, but they're like, what I have, I usually have it here on a silver platter. I'm like, where is it? It's right outside. But to show you, um, I promise people, we go on my website and look, winbrandfarms.com. It's, um, it's, it's gorgeous, um, silky, sexy, sweet, soil-looking stuff that it looks like coffee grounds or chocolate cake. Uh, yeah. and, Next to no smell, it smells like mountain air or the forest floor or rain or a little musty and earthy, but like hardly anything at all. And you could never tell that it was a banana peel or a carrot top or um, or hay or straw or manure or wood chips or any of these organic, any of these different kinds of organic matter and organic matter being anything that was once alive and anything that was once alive can be, including us, including humans, can be composted. As we should be, but you know, that's another story. Yet <laughs> <laughs> another story in the story of, of, of compost and and um, and compost happens. It happens in different ways. There are different kinds of methods and techniques, but there yeah. are, um, you know, some processes like the chopper dehydrator that is not at all doing composting. Mm -hmm. And so to jump from that to um, big industry, what big industry has done yeah, is yeah. co-opted the C word, is co-opted the, the term composting because there is value associated with compost. Yeah. But what they're making, what these huge industrial manufacturers are, are making is not compost. It's, it's, it's pulverized ground up organic matter. It doesn't have much or any virtue in or on soil and can even be detrimental to soil, to the biology, to the life in the soil, to the soil food web, to the soil mm. ecosystem, and detrimental to the way plants grow. So to say, you know, just not all compost are created equal and you have, you know, you got a, a beat up old Chevy and, uh, and a nice new Honda and like a new Rolls Royce. And it's, it's even more of a dramatic disparity than that. It's like literally a, a shell of a, of a vehicle in a junkyard with no tires and no engine and mm -hmm. a rocket ship. That's the, that's the, and a flying car. So um, when people say compost, you know, different people Thank with, with different amounts of education and awareness are talking about very different things. Nonetheless, yeah. nonetheless, when we take our food waste and chuck it in a pile in the backyard, whether it's carefully managed and we have a really dialed in carbon to nitrogen ratio and everything, all the conditions are just right, oxygen, moisture, not too much, not too little, some browns, some greens, some food waste, and some wood chips. Whether it does it optimally, like really optimally and efficiently, or a bit less than optimally, it's going to break down, it's going to decompose into small little unrecognizable parts and hopefully potentially be really good for the soil and um, really participate in um, 
in on, on a micro but also really important and significant level contribute to mitigating climate change yeah. so within the compost process if like here is perfect and we kind of have like here and here it's like if we're within this area then we're good outside yeah. of this area if it's stinky and slimy and really smelly it's anaerobic it's without oxygen and so it's releasing harmful greenhouse gases now in our backyard it's on a micro micro scale so hey whatever i'm mean, chuck it in the green bin and start over exactly um, and or it's sitting there you know on the other side of things it's like you can you know ripped up newspaper of course you can compost and if it's just so dry you can read the newspaper print a year later it's really just not doing anything and it's decomposing extremely slowly like if yeah. you just you know came back to a newspaper 20 years later in the backyard you might actually still see remnants of it if it was just sitting on top of the earth like you'd be like oh that was a newspaper but you can't read any of the print and but you can still tell right but when you compost a newspaper correctly when you rip it up into tiny little pieces and mix it with other organic matter and it's aerobic and there's moisture in a month you won't be able to find any newspaper yeah because it'll be completely decomposed into that rich soil dark brown moist material that is so good for your plants and one of the things I love that you do, and we're going to get to your consulting, because obviously, guys, this is not for the amateur composter. I know from experience. I made the slime. It was not pretty. You need, you need to learn. But um, you do it. You need to transform. You're trying to teach us to transform the way we handle our waste, meaning we just throw it away. And there is no away. It needs to be composted on site. Whether you're a home, a school, a business, an industry, if you, if you have the space, I understand space is limited in some places. You have solutions for these things, but we need to stop thinking of it as a way or hauling it away where it rots somewhere underground. We can use, we can make that compost, make the medicine, put the nutrients back in the earth and heal the damage we've done for the past 50, 60 years. Yes. None of that. <laughs> answer yes. <laughs> so to tell the, the green waste story, the waste hauler story really quickly. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying to all of our viewers and everyone on earth, um, you can't use that, don't use that. But I will say, you know, next to the landfill um, and, and the tabletop devices, <laughs> after those things, putting our food waste in the green bin, in the organic bin for our waste hauler to take is, is the worst thing we can do with our food waste and composting it, um, recovering it, and transforming it, composting it at the sites, at our homes, at our schools, at our organizations, where the food waste and the food scraps, we'll call a carrot top and a lettuce bottom, food scraps. And food waste is like, hey, you didn't eat the, the last fourth of that sandwich, of that piece of pizza. That's food waste, um, which we can, of course, totally minimize. Maybe we can't do away with 100%, but potentially 90, 95. Um, mm -hmm. That is really best, the best thing we can do with that is compost it where it was created. And so what I specialize in is doing that, is um, I've, I've invented a system and a program that brings down all of the previous barriers to make it possible for the first time that I've ever seen for organizations like schools to compost 100% of their food waste in a way that is safe and responsible yeah. and that they can do with ease and confidence and consistent sensational success. And so composting is quite an art. And some of our viewers are thinking, oh, I tried in the backyard and it was in, and like you, Wendy, and it was a stinky slimy mess and it, and it really is an art and a science. Yeah. And, um, and I mean, you know, at the beginning of my career, I mean, people would say, and people say, oh, oh Stephen, if everyone was doing what you were doing and growing their own food and I'm thinking, well, not every, you know, we need, you know, teachers and doctors and there are a lot of Diversity. professors. We yeah. don't, yeah. but there are a lot of, and, and people are, we can only do so much. And so we pay people to do other things that we're not experts at because none of us have the time and the energy to do everything. I don't know, to, to, to make all of our clothes to right to do. And so that's why we have, that's why there's an economy. Um, and as, as, um, as the years go by, 
and we are seeing the effects of our lifestyle and our culture, our carbon footprint, all the waste and the pollution that we create and how this is um, killing the, the, the sources that sustain us, we need to and we are rethinking uh, human ecology, how we interact with and, and behave with and, and treat the earth, the, literally the source that sustains us. And if we don't, if we don't, if we're not, if we don't come to work and live in deeper harmony with mother nature, then our, and this is where I go. This is really the big picture of why I do what I do. Then our species will eventually be proven irrelevant on this planet. And so one of the most important things I think we need to do is keep our food waste out of the landfill, which I haven't even talked about why, and probably most of your viewers know this, but I'll just say when it goes to the landfill, landfills are anaerobic without oxygen and they off gas extraordinary amounts of carbon and CO2 and ammonia and, methane. and methane. And, um, and so we want to minimize all that we put in there and we can't ship our trash to India and China anymore. And our landfills are filling up and all this, this whole tragic story. So, um, and I think even the greater picture is we need to consume less yes. and refuse Absolutely. more in the first place and reuse as much as we possibly can and repurpose and re everything before we recycle, which is that's oh, yeah, And it's not a new concept. I mean, our grandparents would, you know, mend things that were ripped, darn the socks, to, you know, sew up a hole in something. Nowadays, you get a hole and you're like, oh, worthless, must throw away. It's just gone now. It will never be useful again. No. Mend it. Learn how to sew. Put the button back on. <laughs> yes. 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 I mean, and so, like, not rocket science. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And so the, 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 the green waste, the organics bin story is that it's picked up on huge trucks that take all of that organic matter, which what is that organic matter? It's anything and everything. For instance, I'm in Los Angeles that Angelinos put in their green bins, which is um, dog poop, motor oil, uh, paint, every pesticide and fungicide and herbicide known to humans that are, by the way, these are the not the nasty ones that are sanctioned to be eaten by humans that are on foods that are disgusting and have no place in our world. These are a whole other class of chemicals that that have glyphosate and just the most atrocious chemicals that are Thank killing you. the life of the soil and that are killing us slowly and that have ridden our species with disease. Um, and th that's what, you know, the mower blower folks are spraying on the grass and the shrubs and um, none of that, you know, those chemicals have no place in our world in the first place. Mm -hmm. But when they're sprayed on the organic matter, that contaminates the organic that's that's contaminated should be contaminated poison and yeah. um well one thing i love that you said was when you have proper compost and proper agriculture you don't need the pesticides you don't need the fungicides you don't need and most people even i would be like of course you need an insecticide i got bugs but you don't it actually if it's a healthy enough plant it can protect itself right absolutely it's a healthy enough plant it can protect itself if the soil is healthy the plants will be healthy. Um, pests cannot feed off healthy plants because healthy plants make complete proteins and um, pests don't feed on complete proteins. It's, it's things like that. It's like, it's so it really is. It really is that easy. Like grow the soil, nourish the soil and everything that grows from the soil is going to be strong and disease and pest resistant. Pretty much. Yes. In the greater picture, when there's infestations of bugs and animals and things around our lands and houses and it's 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 deeper than it's more than just spraying to kill that's a band-aid it's it's why why is it like that why are the conditions what are the underlying causes and we look at that and there's always a cure for that and um and yeah so these pesticides and herbicides these chemicals have no place on our earth it's only because humans 
think that they need to grow um, one crop, mono crop, for miles and miles and miles. That is nothing yeah. like how we find in nature. They think this is the only way to feed humanity. And it's, of course, not the way to feed humanity is small scale, diversified organic agriculture with many different kinds of plants growing um, together, um, which makes a strong for a strong ecosystem. Um, and so when you have a mono crop, um, one crop for miles and miles and miles, um, crazy infestations of bugs come and then chemicals are sprayed on them and then the bugs die, but the bugs come back stronger. And then people are making God move overs, GMOs, and that, Ooh, um, that. that, that mm -hmm. plants that are, that are um, withstanding chemicals because yeah, of, that's uh, scary uh, stuff. Genetically modified. And then the bugs die and the humans go, ha, and then the bugs come back and they're like super bug. They're like Frankenstein bugs. <laughs> And so it's a vicious <laughs> cycle that just never, and, and it just, it doesn't need to happen that way in the first place. You put some corn with some tomatoes with some uh, alfalfa and vetch and, and really high nitrogen fixing crops and grains and legumes and, and fruits and perennials and annuals and, and um, different plants and in different, uh, yeah. And, um, and you have what we find in mother nature and you make compost and feed the soil and everything pretty much just grows really, really, really well. Yeah, you just described the, the full cycle that we need to go back to because we've made this broken cycle of, you know, buy, chop it down, throw away, start over again, buy, chop it down, throw it. Away. We need to stop doing that. Doesn't work. Um, but you going back to your teachings, though, I mean, you actually teach people how to do that. I mean, I believe you also sell your compost. People who just want to buy it can just go to your farm. and. Yes. I yeah. do, and you can find that on my website, my compost and my compost tea. And I know already, oh my gosh, we've spent so much time together. And before I tell about my system, I want to say the end of the Greenway story, which is it goes on big trucks really far away, and yeah. it's transferred to other trucks that take it really farther away. And then it sits in ginormous anaerobic piles and huge machinery turns it and turns out oh, first it's chopped up through huge grinders, ginormous machinery, then big machines push it around and turn it. It's got, it's in huge pyramids. So there are many anaerobic parts, parts without yeah. oxygen, so it's off gassing methane and ammonia. And it is not totally composted. So when you look at the finished product, it's got these big chunks of things in it that still need to be much, much more decomposed. And the soil does not like organic matter in it that is not decomposed. Um, so that's the really short story of the, of, of sending it off with a waste hauler. And on the far other end of it, basically what I've done is I've taken all of my knowledge and experience and distilled it into a codified system that anyone, regardless of their experience, composting or gardening can follow all they, all they need is the desire and the commitment to do it. And so these are folks I'm talking about like teachers and students and administrators and maintenance folks at schools, for instance, to collect oh. the food waste, bring like it that. over to the systems, the, the, the containers that I build that you can see on my website. It's under the life cycler compost system on windbrandfarms.com. And these containers are cylindrical and they stand five feet tall and they're four feet wide. And so we, um, we fill them with food waste, the green, the nitrogen, and wood chips and leaves, the browns, the carbon. And yeah. when these ingredients are put together in a particular way, then they generate heat. And this is all of the microbes that are proliferating mm -hmm. and breaking down the organic matter. And the heat also, um, also um, reduces pathogens. So we have safe oh, compost. Cool. The it doesn't have things like E. coli and salmonella in it. And, um, and so what people know of composting, many people is that um, it can often be a stinky, smelly mess, that there are smells and flies and pests. And so the system has alleviated all of that. It's a really highly scientific codified system with, with a recipe and prescriptions. And it's so easy and simple to follow. And all that we do, the, the conditions that we create and maintain, the optimal conditions yeah. to transform organic matter into humus, into finished compost, into its smallest, most broken down parts, we um, eliminate. We don't have smells. We don't have flies. Um, the containers are 100% pest proof because the right conditions 
none of those things are are a part of it. The smells aren't a part of it when we do it right. The pests aren't attracted to it when we um, when we handle yeah. it a certain way. And then um, and then the end product is a really high quality organic soil amendment is finished compost that um, that has a really high monetary value that's superior to any synthetic fertilizer. And um, actually, the first schools that I'm working with. Um, this is the second year. So last school year was the pioneering year and the programs all went spectacularly. They're transforming the culture of, of each and every school they're at. It's, it's amazing. So we're about to harvest our first compost. And so there have been all of these aha moments for the students and the community that, wow, we're seeing our food waste for the first time um, because it was just going in the trash and no one was seeing it. And now we collect it and we chop it up in a metal tub with shovels and that's the students favorite oh i saw the picture yeah the kids were just yeah that was a great picture yeah. and i love the fact you're teaching kids because they're gonna, they're the ones that are going to carry that knowledge forward they're the ones that are going to really be much more readily adaptable to change yeah as the young are but i mean the the cylinder things i saw on your website they don't take up a huge footprint they're actually i mean yes they're five feet tall but they're not you know these gigantic things they're very manageable for smaller spaces so Right. You can pretty much use them anywhere. Yeah. They're next to classrooms and school kitchens, and they're right in the center of all the action. Like they're the pride and joy of the school. And everyone sees that they're 20 feet away from the carpool lines where all the parents come to pick up the kids. And so it's really, it's, it's the first and only of its kind. Composting has never been done this way with this kind of um, safety and responsibility and efficiency and um, cleanliness, all these things. And so um, this is one of the key components that I see to creating more resilient, lower carbon footprint communities okay. and a society. I think that as much as we possibly can, we need to be composting our food waste at the places that it was created, at our homes, at our businesses, our organizations. And granted with my system per se, not every place can do it not every restaurant that only has a tiny slice of an alley yeah i get do that. it but every organization that can do it needs to be doing it and that when we are um diverting our food when we're recovering our food waste keeping it out of the landfill keeping it out of it going places that are not good for the earth and for humanity and we're doing the best thing we can do with it then we have this tool this medicine yeah. to um, to heal the earth and to grow food and to heal communities because the the yeah. compost good compost increases soil health and the healthier the soil is the healthier that everything grows from the earth is and the healthier we are and yeah. we're missing that vitality because the earth is that vitality yeah. and composting is the primary the cornerstone way of of restoring that vitality and within the the realm of climate change soil is our greatest carbon sink soil is the greatest oh, resource we have to sequester carbon out of the atmosphere and trap it in the soil where it belongs and the healthier soil is the better more efficiently and more robustly the soil can sequester carbon and compost is yeah. the key in making that happen so exactly. it's from, from a climate change perspective, from a health and wellness perspective, from a waste reduction perspective, from all these different perspectives and more, this is, this is the best thing that we can, doing, that we can be doing and what we all need to be doing um, in some way, shape or form, and some methods are better than others, to, um, to make it so the generations after us um, potentially inherit a, a cleaner and healthier healthier world. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I, I love the messaging you have. And I love the fact you've dedicated your life to this because ha returning the soils to what they should be um, a healthier soil also absorbs water more readily. So they'll have less flooding issues or, you know, from these rainstorms we're not getting more frequently. Um, how do people find you? How do people get in touch with you, buy your compost or better yet, buy the system and take your classes, take your consulting? Yeah, winbrandfarms.com. It's W Y N. B R A N D T. And I think you can see the name on your screen. Yeah. And uh, 
And yeah, feel free to, um, to email, to call. Um, and um, yeah, particularly if you have um, work at a school or an organization right. where large amounts of food waste are being made, there is extraordinary potential to um, bring this system into your uh, sustainability program and to, uh, to um, create a really engaging and inspiring program for your entire community to transform how we understand food waste and, yeah. um, and creating great value. It's like, it's a, it's like a, my friends have call it things like it's, it's a machine for making golden eggs. I mean, it's not a machine, yeah. it's moving parts and, and it's, and it's, and it's, um, and, and I like to describe the compost making process as alchemy. It's like, we're taking something that's smelly and making it sweet taking something that's yeah. passed away and making it cherished something with no perceived value um, into something with extraordinary value. And so when I see, you know, at the school, like just burrito mush and, and um, smush ends of hamburgers and sandwiches and, and gushy, mushy pasta, I see, I see soil fertility. I see money. I see health. I yeah. see, entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, yes. I see uh, the puns are endless. And so it's extraordinary for, for kids and for everyone to see, you know, wow, it started out as this and it became this. And now we, and now we're using this to, to grow food. Wow. I'm using this to, you know, I composted the end of my sandwich, which had lettuce in it. And we're, we're using this finished compost to grow lettuce in the garden. Wow. And the cycle, the cycle is complete. No, it's it's beautiful what you're doing. And, you know, guys, I highly recommend checking out Winbrandt Farms. The website has everything you could ever want in it. Um, all the information is there. You can easily find Stephen. So thank you, Stephen, for everything. Um, welcome back anytime as your updates come, as more information come forward. How we eat our food, where we get our food, how we grow our food, that is one of the most important things we need to return back to, return back to our roots. Pun not intended. It just came out that way. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that, guys. I'm Wendy Nystrom, your host with Environmental Social Justice. Thank you, Stephen. Winbrandt Farm, guys, check it out. It is very important that we compost. We'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye.